Good afternoon, St. Charles West, and welcome back to this week's episode of Tribe TV. I'm your host, Gabe Mahoney, and today in the studio with me is Katie Barner. Her video, Kale, got first place in this month's documentary challenge. So Katie, where did you come up with the idea for your video? Well, recently, as my video says, there has been an extreme, like, obsession over Kale, mostly in the hipster community. Um, and so I just wanted to do, like, a goofy mockumentary kind of thing about that. Were there any difficulties when filming? Um, there was one scene in the video that kind of got a little sketchy when we were recording it. Um, we basically went to Main Street and we did a bit of a kale deal, so we got a few strange looks for that. But other than that, it was pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. Uh, best way to go, pretty smooth. Yeah. So, my last question before we go to your video. Do you consider yourself a hipster? Um, I do not, but that's probably the hipster way of thinking about it. So, I guess it's up to you. Lock on, man. Enjoy the video, St. Charles West. In recent years, a phenomenal increase in the popularity of one leafy vegetable has been observed. From local grocery stores, to health and fitness blogs, to popular restaurants, kale has become the trendy addition to any meal. But what suddenly made this vegetable so popular? Our team took to the streets to find out. I've been on kale for about three months now. It's completely taken over my life. I started when a friend of mine convinced me to try some of his kale smoothie. I figured one little sip wouldn't matter. But, well, you know how it goes. I guess I never expected it to be so addicting. I mean, you hear about it everywhere and you see what it does to people. You just never think it would happen to you. But once you're on it, you just can't quit. You need it. You can't go without it. It's all you can think about. It's all you want. Kale becomes your whole life. You want kale chips, kale juice, kale salsa, creamed kale, and it's everywhere. You couldn't quit if you wanted to because it's so easy to get. I can hardly even remember what my life was before I started kale, but I can't go back now. I can never go back. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Kale production in the states has increased by nearly 60% between 2007 and 2012. To get a better understanding of how kale has spread through suburban communities, our team spoke with a local kale gardener who has chosen not to reveal his name. Yeah, I've been in the kale business for about two, three months now, and business is good. It's pretty solid. The average grocery store will sell it for about two, three dollars a bunch, but this is premium leaf, so my guy slings it around for about five dollars a bunch. There's all sorts of kinds too. Let's see, you got your common coily kale, joisy kale, cow cabbage, Chinese broccoli, smiling tummy, my personal favorite, ragged jack. I don't know what made kale so popular. People nowadays, they just flock to whatever they're told is cool or trendy. All I know is that as long as there's some kid out there looking for some leaf, I'm in business. You've got kale. What the kale, man? Widely known as the king of superfoods, kale has taken the world by storm, seeing a 400% increase in appearance on restaurant menus in the past five years. Dr. Ho, a kale specialist, has been carefully studying the development of the kale phenomenon for years and claims to understand the reason for the green's growing appeal. Well, you see, brassica oleracea, or kale, is essentially the healthiest thing one can eat. As a member of the cabbage family, it has countless powerful antioxidants. It's low in calories, high in fiber, and has zero fat. A single cup of raw kale contains almost seven times the recommended daily amount of vitamin K, which is essential for preventing heart disease and increasing bone strength. Is it dangerous? 
Well, there are absolutely zero health risks associated with kale. It's a near-perfect vegetable. The only negative effects of being on kale that we know of include never shutting up about it. Users tend to lose sleep due to how much they talk about it, blog about it, take pictures of it, try to get other people hooked. But other than that, it's totally harmless. The, the first thing is the kale chips, which I just wanted to show you. That it takes so it's so quick. I love kale chips. And kids, they turn into like humanity's love for kale was prominent long before the modern era. Its historical popularity extends to the Middle Ages and even ancient Greece and Rome. However, the recent and sudden surge in kale's influence is unlike anything ever seen before, which leads to the question: Why? Why did this relatively bland vegetable suddenly soar in popularity? Why? I'll tell you why. Because they made it this way. Do you want to know why kale got so popular out of nowhere? It didn't. Not without them pulling the strings. I'm talking about the AKA, aka the American Kale Association. The people behind kale t-shirts, kale music, trendy kale salads, celebrity endorsements, the works. The American Kale Association sounds harmless, right? Just a bunch of friendly neighborhood kale farmers trying to up their business, trying to support themselves, right? Wrong. The AKA, they aren't even farmers. No, real kale farmers are actually suffering from all this. Supply and demand, competitive markets, you know. So who are they really? I've been asking that question for years now, years. You look at their website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you find nothing. No contact info. You call the National Farmers Union asking about the AKA. They say they've never heard of them. They tell you to check with the United Fresh Produce Association. Well, guess what? They've never heard of them either. Neither do actual kale farmers from across the country. No one's heard of the AKA. No one works with the AKA. No one can find the AKA. It's an organization that doesn't exist. The mystery surrounding the kale movement's origin can actually be traced back to one woman, Oberon Sinclair a PR supposedly hired by the American Kale Association in 2013, Sinclair is actually the mastermind behind the entire kale uprising. She faked the existence of the AKA, thinking that people would be less interested in kale if they'd known a public relations firm was behind it. Sinclair is credited with the spread of kale culture through all forms of social media and its immense success. As she said in an interview with the health blog Mind Body Green, I wanted to do something differently, and I did. However unconventional Sinclair's methods may be, they were undoubtedly effective. As Kale's popularity continues to grip hipsters and health nuts alike, it begs the question, what superfood will be the next to spread across America? What will it mean for its users? Back St. Charles West. Katie, I really enjoyed that video. Thank you. Are all the facts in your video legitimate facts about kale? They absolutely are. Um, I've actually put in maybe five hours of just straight kale research, so I can 100% confirm they are accurate. Good, good. I mean, you could have accurate facts if you're doing a documentary on something. True. So what was your favorite part of the video, in your personal opinion? Uh, well, personally, I really enjoyed uh, Doug Hartman's scene when we were recording him eating the kale because he actually, he actually really, really liked it. Like, he had a bit of an actual addiction thing going on. He ate pretty much all of our prop kale, so. Uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Tune in next week, St. Charles West. What the heck? <laughs> Do I get so much? Come on, man. <laughs>
rock on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's where you go. <laughs> Where's the rock? <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh, Sorry, I had to add that one in there. No, we're recording. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hey, fill out the pass and I'll be there in a minute.